here we have the externals of the machine. It is a repurposed electric wheelchair that was originally designed for large occupants. We are currently looking at the front end of it, which is front wheel drive with 16 inch wheels that are driven by approximately uh, two horsepower motors. The back of the unit has these smaller pivoting wheels that also has a rocker arm for some mild amount of suspension. Along the back of the unit, we have a strobe light that flashes whenever the system is on. We have a set of two rear-facing red lights to indicate direction of travel. As we come along the side of the unit, we have a set of external voltmeters that show the 24-volt battery bank all the way on the left, the 12-volt regulated supply in the middle, and the 5-volt logic supply on the right. In the front of it, we have two front-facing LED lights. We have a circuit breaker panel where one circuit breaker is for all the auxiliaries such as logic, remotes, video, and lighting. These two bonded breakers are for the, uh, the motor controller. Additionally to these two lights on the front of the vehicle, we have two more lights on the back of the vehicle. Under this hood, we have a front-facing camera, and along the left side and the right side of the machine, we have cameras. And then all the way on the back of the machine, we have a rear-facing camera. All these cameras talk to a central video unit that stitches them all together for a bird's eye view. We also have an onboard charger that charges the 24-volt battery bank up. Under the lid of the unit, on the inside of the unit, you can see the two AGM 12 volt batteries that are hooked in series. These batteries feed this as our main distribution. Out of here, we still have 24 volts. Two of the breakers go to the Sabertooth drive controller, while the other breaker feeds a fuse distribution hub on a lid. On the interior of this machine, we have our 24 volt battery charger that charges each battery individually. We have the video processor on the right, which takes all the cameras, puts them together. And we have the drive motors here. These drive motors are torque tested to approximately 130 foot-pounds of torque each motor. They peak around 90 amps of power consumption and are somewhere around two horsepower, one and a half kilowatts, something along that lines. We move from this part of the chassis to the lid. We have several components in play. We have one of the cameras that are mounted on the top of the lid. Then we have our fuse block. Power flows in through the fuse block and this is used as our main 24 volt distribution up top, and then we have 12 volt sub distribution on the bottom. So from the 24 volt distribution, we feed several voltage regulators. We have a five volt regulator and a 12 volt regulator. The five volt regulator also feeds this bus buyer to power up the additional, additional loads on this panel. Up there on the top are our voltmeters, here we have our wireless video transmitter. This is used for the radio link control, and this is used for telematics back. <clears throat> on the top, we have our two brake lights, which are nothing special. They're just 12 volts that are wired up to be on all the time. We have a small motorcycle horn here that's also tied to a remote trigger on a remote.
The radio used is a Radiolink AT10. On this AT10, I also have an older cell phone attached to the top with a 3D printed mount that holds it to the antenna. The cell phone is attached to a wireless transmitter that connects to the chassis to stream uh, standard definition video. It does it over a USB OTG port. We have telemetry from this Radiolink module that reports the, uh, well, that's the receiver battery on the remote. And then we have the 5 volt supply on the machine. And we can also see what the 24 volt battery bank is at. If I turn on the display, we can also see the video feed from the machine. Currently, the video machine, uh, the video feed on the machine is composed of four cameras around the perimeter of the vehicle and it stitches them all together to create this top-down view. The switch is linked to manually toggle the full screen view on the left of which camera I want to look at. Forward, left, right, and reverse. If I press and hold this down, I'll just get a full screen view of the front camera or the rear camera. This is done by using a relay control from here that talks to the ECU that stitches the videos together to change that video. On this remote, I also have lighting control via this. So as you can see on the camera feed, what lights are on and off. We got no lights. Front lights, off lights, rear lights, and front lights.
the death machine. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying this quite a lot. This is like everything I hoped it would be. <laughs> Wildly annoying. <laughs>